Okay. Good evening, E3 10th grade families. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, we're going to be discussing what you can expect a little bit in the 10th grade year. And before we get started, though, um, we're going to go ahead and see, find out who needs to, um, who would prefer to have the presentation in Spanish. And then we're going to break out into two groups. Ms. Colon, will you say a little bit more about that? Buenas tardes a todos. Um, tenemos la presentación también en español en, otra, en la, otro enlace de Zoom. Entonces le voy a poner ahora mismo en el chat. Ahí tienen el enlace. Voy a empezar esa presentación ahora. Entonces si, si quieren, tenemos la traducción ahí y la presentación entera va a estar en español. Muchísimas gracias a todos. Gracias. Alrighty, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Okay, we'll wait just a minute for our parents that are joining her. Okay, good evening again, E3 families. We're gonna go ahead and get started. We wanna welcome you to the 20, uh, 2020, 2021 school year in the era of COVID and all that it brings with it. Uh, my name is Dr. Ward. You all know me, so I won't go into too many details. I am your principal and CEO. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and introduce ourselves quickly and then we'll get started. Ms. Strenning. Hello, everybody. It's so nice to see you virtually. Welcome you back to your 10th grade year. You made it through your ninth grade year, and we're super excited. Um, I am Ms. Strenning. I'm one of the college and career counselors. My caseload is M through Z. Um, and then Ms. Cologne that was just talking and leading the Spanish presentation, her caseload is A through L. But that doesn't mean you can't come to either one of us for anything. We're all here to help you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I'll also be running the chat. So as we go along, if you have any questions, please feel free to write it in the chat and we'll try to address it during the presentation. Thank you. And now, Mr. Smith. Yes, thank you. We still can't hear you, Mr. Smith. How about that? Am I there? Now we can hear you. Okay, it takes a while, a little lag. Um, I'm Mr. Smith. I'm the wellness therapist. Um, some of you may know me already. It's good to see some of you, your faces um, and to welcome you back. Um, as you know, I'm the wellness therapist at school to provide mental health support and um, referral support if you need that type of work. All right. Thank you, Mr. Smith. And uh, Mr. Russell. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Um, Connor Russell. I manage all of our technology and uh, student information systems at E3. So if you or your scholar have um, issues with PowerSchool or their laptop or any instructional services or Zoom, um, it's either going to be myself or Miss Area, our other IT person who's going to be um, assisting you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Russell. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Our agenda this evening, we'll start with our mission and vision. Everything that we do, we start with the mission and vision. We'll go over the daily schedule and logistics some calendar information, professional attire. We'll look at attendance, Zoom norms, because we will be starting in the, in, uh, the virtual space through distance learning, parent portal and parent square information for you to communicate with us. Uh, we will look at back to school shopping lists, although we will provide you with most of the, the materials and resources that you need. Uh, we'll just briefly look at our website and the academics, the grade level courses, schedule changes, how you go about doing that, and then tips for success. We'll end with the 10th grade learning facilitators, an introduction to who they are. And then we'll tell you a little bit about our parent think tank. And we've had to change the parent think tank meeting. Got it, perfect, thank you. All right. So the mission and vision of E3 Civic High, three things to engage, to educate, and empower our learning community to be caring. And the word caring we added 
because we've seen a lot of people in the world who are not caring. And if you're not a caring person, then the rest really doesn't matter. So to be caring, passionate, lifelong learners, prepared for college, workforce, and life. And at E3, we say all three, college, workforce, and life, because we're not just preparing kids to go to college, we're preparing them to go to college to do something after college in the workforce, to become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, an innovator, a computer scientist, uh, a marine biologist, a marine scientist, an astronaut, whatever it may be. But college is not the end, it's a means to the end. And so we have to be very clear that we don't, don't go to college just to go to college, right? We go to college to get somewhere. And we're doing this in an ever-changing environment. COVID has shown us that we have an ever-changing environment, but it's not an environment to be afraid of. It's an environment where we can innovate and uh, make the world a better place. Okay, daily schedule and logistics. Ms. Strenning. Yeah, so everybody, the schedule will be very similar to what you saw in the spring when we went virtual. Um, we will still have Mondays and Wednesdays are A days, Tuesdays and Thursdays are B days. We'll start the days off with Mod 1 and Mod 2, then we'll have advisory Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, and we'll still have PEL on Wednesdays and Fridays. And then we'll, end, we'll have a lunch about just over an hour for you to have lunch. And if you need to go pick lunch up, that's a good time for you to do that. And then we'll end each day with mod, mod three and four. And then at 325, um, that's when office hours begin. And then tutoring, if you need any help with any subject, you can um, attend tutoring in the afternoons. The Thank one you. thing. Go ahead. The one thing that did flip a little bit is our Fridays. So Fridays, we're gonna start the day with eBlocks. So that's 9 a.m. to 10.30. And then we're gonna have some personalized learning time. You'll have your lunch and then we'll end the afternoon with your design thinking course. And of course, seniors will have their college prep. Um, and then we'll have tutoring in the afternoon from 2.30 to 3.30 on Fridays. And as always, Saturdays are open for virtual Saturday Academy. We'll hear more about that in a little bit and the parent collaborative on Saturdays. Okay, and Ms. Trinity, can you just quickly uh, go to the participants and uh, I would just like if you can just go down each participant very quickly and I'd like to get the name of the parent and scholar. Okay, I can screenshot everybody. Would you like me to do that? Screenshot. Ah, sorry. So you want the who was here? Yeah, no, I just want to um, oh, there's everybody. The participants. Yes, yeah, so uh, Alina, okay, this is Alina. Okay, Alina is here. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, okay, so Pangligon is new. Mm -hmm. And so her son should be a freshman, though, right? He's a 10th grader this year. Oh, he's Thanks. a 10th grader this year. Yeah. Okay, good, excellent. Okay, and this is uh, this is John's old brother, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, okay, James. Excellent. Okay, excellent. Good to see James, yes. And then Ariana, um, Ariana, Ariana 10th grader. I'm thinking who's Ariana 10th grader. Okay, Bianca, Brandon, Bri Brianna, okay, Camila. Uh, okay, who is Carl Zamo 16, please? Uh, Carlos. Oh, that's Carlos. Okay, Carlos. Okay, which Carlos? Carlos, last name? Zamora. Okay, hey Carlos. All right, and then we have Camila. Okay, good. And Kathy, um, Kathy, who is Kathy's daughter? Which Kathy are, who are we talking about here? Hello, who's Kathy? Okay, I don't know who Kathy is. She's not one of our scholars. So that's someone's mom, probably. Okay, Connor is here. Farmer, okay, good to see you, Connor. Emiliano, okay. Uh, Eva, Eva Suarez. Eva, who is your child? Okay. My son um, is Diego Gonzalez. Diego, okay, Diego. Okay, yes. good, uh -huh. excellent. Okay. Aaron Dira, uh, Aaron Dira. Who who is Erin Dira? Uh, Renee. It's just my my first name. 
Oh, Renee, you go. Okay. All right, Renee. Good to see you, Renee. All right. All right. Okay. All right. And then we have, um, uh, let's see, we have Camila. Okay, so Camila already. Uh, Fatima is here. Good. Giselle. Imani. Okay, good. James Factor and James and um, James and Najerner, right? Najerner is here too. All right. Um, let's see. Kimberly. Luis. Luce. Okay. Uh, who is Luce? 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 For Veronica Moran. Okay, Veronica. Okay, good. Thank you. And Milatia Naranjo, who is your child? My daughter is Renee Erendira. Oh, okay. Okay, that's you. Okay, good. Okay, good. All right, Nicholas, Juliana. Okay, good. All right, just want to see who we have here today. Okay, good. Okay, thank you, parents, and thank you, scholars. And Renee ran off. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> All right. All right, we're going to keep going. We just wanted to see who we had with us today and make sure we recognize everyone here. Okay, so that was our schedule. And now when we start the school year, we're going to be 100% online. And uh, we're hoping sometime late September that we will have some in-person learning. Uh, we're going to start small. Well, we're going to keep it small. Only 120 kiddos back on campus for in-person learning uh, starting the end of the month. You receive surveys. If you didn't get the survey, we're going to make this presentation uh, available to you, and the survey is here. So please fill out the survey regarding uh, returning to campus, right? So school starts on Monday, August 31st for everybody, and then um, the in person back on campus, we're hoping to start on the 21st of September, but we'll keep you posted. And we will have a parent think tank, I believe, on the 3rd of September to talk more about returning to school. All right. And then when we're on camera for our distance learning, we want all of our kiddos in their professional attire tops. I'm in my uh, summer, summer bridge shirt today. We are in summer bridge for our incoming ninth graders. So I'm in my summer bridge shirt. But we need all of our kiddos in their E3 tops next week, uh, actually not next week, but the following week, we need them in their E3 shirts, all right? When they're online, because we want them to get out of bed, wash their face, brush their teeth, get their shirt on, and be ready to learn, okay? So they need to be in their E3 um, shirts. And then on Tuesdays, we want everyone in our tie Tuesdays, even through distance learning. Now, if you need to purchase any of our um, attire, then you can go to the online store and here's the link to the online store as well. All right, and then when you come back to campus, we'll be back in our full professional attire. Calendar and important dates. Uh, speak about this very quickly. The first day of school for everyone, absolutely everybody is Monday, August 31st at 8.30 a.m. We come back to school virtually. And you'll get the links for that this week. Your LFs will be sending the links to your classes. Um, progress reports, the first uh, reporting period after our first five weeks will be Friday, August, uh, October 2nd. You should be receiving some information. Then about two months into the school year, actually about 10 weeks, we'll have our fall student-led conferences, and you see those dates here as well. We'll give you that again, but these are just some important dates to think about coming up. Okay, weekly updates will continue to come from Ms. Cologne. Every Saturday, you'll receive a 12 o'clock phone call with weekly updates, and every Saturday at 5 p.m., you'll receive an email with the weekly updates and any attachments that you may need. So this Saturday, the weekly updates will be going out. And with those weekly updates, you will be receiving uh, a few things this weekend. So you'll receive the school calendar this weekend. You're gonna receive the PowerSchool uh, notes, how to sign up for PowerSchool. And then you're gonna receive one more thing. I'm looking, the virtual 
uh, school calendar. So those things will come in the weekly updates. Okay, if you're not getting your weekly updates, last week was the first week, this is the second week, go ahead and call the school so we can make sure you get all that information. Okay. Okay. Um, you want to talk about this upcoming grade? Sure, parenting? sure. Um, I've, I love seeing a lot of our ninth grade parents at our ninth grade parent institutes that we have those every single year just to kind of update you on everything that's going on, teach you a little bit about the college process. So that way, when you get to 12th grade, yeah, 10th graders. Yeah, I know. But this year, we're going to keep continue with oh, that. Oh, oh, grow you. on it. So ninth thank grade, you. we learn a little bit. And then 10th grade, we learn a little bit. So that way, it's not so much when you get to your 12th grade year, because it is a lot of information, and we don't want to bombard you. Um, so we have our upcoming Parent Institute for 10th grade parents on December 3rd at 5 p.m. Um, and we'll go over the 10th grade timeline. College starts now, kind of a little bit more about colleges to teach you a little bit more about that. And then on April 24th from 9 to 12, we usually lead a community college workshop where we invite all of our community colleges, our great local community colleges in, and they lead workshops, talk to you about all their resources. So we invite the entire school to participate in that because it's never too early to learn. Um, and if you need no in more information or you want to individually plan with your counselor, please contact us to set up a meeting. We love meeting with our families to discuss your courses, your four-year plan, your college and career aspirations, because we are definitely here to help you. So always reach out to us if you need anything. Right. Saturday Academy. So Saturday Academy, we will begin Saturday Academy on September 19th. So if you need any additional help, uh, Ms. Strenning spoke about tutoring, tutoring every day after school from 3.30 to 4.30, Monday through Thursday, and 2.30 to 3.30 on Fridays. And then also on Saturday, Saturday Academy, also virtual from 10 to 12, and you can get help with English, math, social studies, and science, okay? And that starts again, September 19th. You'll get a reminder through our weekly updates, but it's another opportunity to get additional help. Uh, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith there, we can't hear you, Mr. Smith. It's, is it, is it on? Now we can hear you. Okay. Um, so I'm Mr. Smith and we have the Parenting Collaborative continuing. It's good to see some of the faces or just the names in the boxes of parents that have attended in the past. Um, this year is going to be a little bit different. Actually, it's going to be a little bit more the same. Um, we have these differences that happen in these kids' lives, and this is probably the most um, amazing time to go through this process because they're just growing. So we have two places when we're um, visiting, when we're talking about working with our kids. The first one is... In the clinic. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's not the right one. Okay, well, all right. So... We're going to be talking about some of the things. So the ideas when we're talking about working with our kids. Oh, I'm sorry, um, it's just not there. It disappeared. It's okay. We'll, we'll keep going. We're good. We can use this as an example, talking about the experiences that kids are going to go through. The uh, example that I usually give is like going to Disneyland. Disneyland's a, a place that people go to when they want to relax, they want to take easy rides, and they want to get through this. This is the truth about what's going to happen now with our kids it's going to be like magic mountain and if everyone's anyone's visited six flags magic mountain you know there's a lot of roller coasters a lot of ups and downs a lot of excitement but that's what we want to help the parents understand what the experience the kids are going to go through these two questions are these two um, signposts that are here they're going to be coming for the scholars so we want to make sure that they're prepared we want to make sure the parents are prepared and we want to be able to help them get through sats and psats but when we do that we talk to the parents and the next one it talks about how parents work with the kids, what type of attachment styles, which type of parenting styles they use with the kids. And this is just an example to help the parents walk with the kids as they go through this process. And the last one has to do with the brain. And in the front is love. It's that prefrontal cortex part, which controls our um, emotions with, with regards to um, impulse control, decision-making, and just things that, of that nature for um, the kids. It's gonna be a tough go with our kids, but I wanna make sure that every parent knows that there's support on Saturdays when they come in. 
there's food donations, there's additional resources. You'll be surprised at how many resources you'll be able to get when you join with us. And it is super important to make sure we have your phone numbers because when we call and we have um, giveaways, we wanna make sure you get those. But that's me, I'll be here. We can have referral supports for the kids, but making sure when we talk to the parents, any question is always a good question. So we'll have that space available. Thank you, Mr. Kent. Okay, professional attire. That is Mr. D Bowden, uh, Dean Bowden. Uh, he's celebrating his mom's 75th birthday, I think it is today. So he's not with us. So we're gonna fill in for him. This is the professional attire, uh, same as we've had last year, except now we have blue pants added to our attire due to one of our seniors last year who did his research on the professional attire and the blue pants and uh, took that to the board, uh, brought it to our school site council first, and then I asked him to bring it to the board, which he did, and so we adopted adding the blue pants to our professional attire. So you see all of it here, things have not changed, so you can, um, uh, if you need to order them, again, the student store is where to go. All right, professional attire days of the week. Just wanna remind everyone that Tuesday will be to tie Tuesday, even while we are in virtual, in the virtual space. And then Thursdays continue to be our spirit day, our college day, our military branch day, our um, summer bridge day, okay? So you can wear all of your special tops on Thursdays. And the first week of school is going to be a special week. And so we're gonna do things a little differently the first week. And the first week, we're gonna have a sort of a patriotic um, voter awareness week. So, First week of school, which is August 31st, we start with our spirit week. On Monday, you're gonna dress as your favorite role model. That's Monday, your favorite role model. Tuesday, wear something with stars and stripes. Wednesday, September 2nd, wear red, white, and blue, or red, white, or blue. And Thursday, back to our school spirit uh, tops, class shirts, class colors, and then our summer bridge. And then here are our class colors, just in case you don't remember, you are the class of 2023 and your class color is black. And hopefully you have your black um, shirts as well. Okay, your, your um, spirit shirts. And Friday is dressed as your future self, your future career self. All right, so that's the first Friday of our school year. And then we also have trivia night on Monday the 31st. And that's our first day back at 4 p.m. You'll get more information on that from our uh, ASB. And on that Friday, the first Friday back, we have movie night from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And you'll get more information on that too. All of this virtually. All right, I'm going to speak quickly on the attendance poly policy on behalf of Dean Bowden again. So basically attendance is the same. The thing that you need to uh, remember is that if you're gonna be out, you're gonna receive, everybody's gonna receive a universal ISC. That's an independent study contract. You'll sign it once and whenever you're out, we will, you just need to call us and say you're, you're scholar is going to be out and we'll make sure they get all the work. Once you sign that universal um, uh, study contract, independent study contract. And the universal independent study contract just gives us uh, permission to send you the work when your scholars are not at school, when they can't make it on a virtual day, when they're ill, uh, things like that. Okay. And so remember that every day counts. Uh, Dean Bowden showed us a yacht dripping of money. And he said the whole purpose of that, showing that yacht dripping of money is that in order for us to um, get to the place where we are financially um, good to go, we have to have good attendance, right? So right now our kids, your business is 
good attendance, coming to school and doing those three things, engaging, getting educated, and then empowering yourself through uh, the myriad of things that we'll have going on at school. All right. So when you're online, we need our cameras on, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute um, to just make sure we have a sense of normalcy. Zoom norms. This is Dean Bowden again, and I am Dean Bowden today. So when you're online, be present. We're gonna get you headsets. We're gonna get you noise, um, noise canceling headsets and also mics. Those are coming in in the middle of September and we'll be sending those to you. So, but we want you to be an active listener, ask lots of questions and then make connections. Make connections with your uh, classmates and make connections with the learning material. Be visible on camera. We see some of our cameras off today, but when we start next week, we need all of our cameras on. Just like last year, if the camera's not on, you're actually marked absent for the day because we need to see your beautiful face. You need to be completely engaged. There will be times when your LFs will ask you to take cameras off, and then those are the times when you turn off your cameras. Okay, and as always, be respectful, share the air, speak up, use the chat, and of course, uh, make sure that your voice is heard in your class. Okay, so make sure that your voice is heard. And then when we show ourselves, that helps us to humanize things so we see each other. Um, we can't actually sit next to each other, but we can at least see one another and that helps us to feel better. Uh, Mr. Smith, anything there about, anything else you wanna add about being on camera and how that makes us feel? Yes, yes, okay. It's uh, the mic keeps going out. Um, definitely a big impact um, for our scholars is getting into a routine. A schedule is most important for your sleep and to be on camera for us to be able to know how you're doing. So having that camera on helps us identify just your well-being. So for us to be able to support you in the best way possible, having that camera on helps us a lot. As within this um, COVID area, era that we're in, there have been a lot of experiences that people are having um, for increased levels of depression and anxiety and um, just feelings of emotions that we want to be able to support. But if we don't have you on camera, we can't really tell how you're doing. That's why I always try and make sure I have a camera on and I've got a light here so people can see my, my face. I know it's not the best face, but it's helpful to know within these relationships how we can continue to build it. It's the new norm. It's how we are, but it's how we take care of each other. When you're here at school, it's easier to do because I can see you. But with the camera, it helps me see just a little bit about you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. All right, and then at home, designate a quiet place to study. Um, even if it's just a small little area where your back's against the wall, um, and then you have an opportunity with our um, headsets that we're gonna get you to um, drown out all the other noise around you, okay? And uh, Mr. Smith already discussed establishing the routine. Okay, Mr. Russell, parent portal. Hi everyone. <clears throat> so uh, our, our student information system, PowerSchool, has a really great uh, parent portal. So you can monitor your scholars' progress in their courses. Um, you can see their overall grades. You can see their attendance. You can drill down to individual assignments. Um, so you can see if an assignment is marked as missing, if, if they're absent in a class, or if they're tardy. Um, and there's a really great Android and iOS app that you can download and sign into, which it'll send you push notifications. Um, you can see who their LFs are. It's a really great, great way to stay engaged. Um, if you had an account last year, it, that account is still active. It still works. Um, if we see that you don't have an account, we're going to be sending home information in the coming weeks on how to, um, how to make an account and how to link it to your scholar. Okay, and um, so they can use their computer, their Android phone, or their um, iPhone, any iOS system, anything like that to access the parent portal. Yep, yeah, Android phone. Um, if you have an iPhone or if you have an iPad, there's an app for both of those, or you can um, go to the, our website, and we'll send all that information out. 
And another oh, I have one more question on the power school. So yeah. I can also see what assignments are missing, right? Yep. Okay. And so how do I do that? So when, as soon as you log into the PowerSchool parent portal, there's an option on the left side that says missing assignments. If you click that, it'll show exactly which assignments the, um, their LFs, their learning facilitators have marked as missing. And of course, you can always email GeniusBar at e3civichigh.com. You'll either get uh, Miss Area or myself answering your uh, question. We're happy to help. Another really great thing we're rolling out this year or um, is Parent Square, and it's replacing um, something we've used in the back end for mass notification and communication. Um, Parent Square is going to be really great to keep in touch with, um, with, with LFs and learning facilitators and staff. Um, it has uh, two-way communication with automatic translation, so um, it should help reduce the language barrier sometimes. Um, has a great web portal and a great web app. Um, and it really aims to be the kind of hub for uh, the school and, and scholars and learning facilitators. And again, we will send um, information home, how to access it. If we have your email on file, you will receive um, like a link to create an account and to link your scholars. Okay, good. So our families will receive information sometimes through Parent Square, sometimes through Google Classroom, right? Because all of our scholars um, log into their classes through Google Classroom. That's where they have all of their assignments and that's where all of our scholars turn in all of their work in Google Classroom. And we also send home parent messages through Google Classroom as well, right? Right, thank you, Dr. Ward. So if you have an email on file, we automatically link it with your scholars Google Classroom. So you should receive um, weekly kind of summary updates on everything they've done in Google Classroom. And if you, if you don't receive those, or if you don't have an email on file, just email GeniusBar and we can help figure out what's going on. Okay, thank you. Do we have any questions so far? No, nope. no, everybody's been really quiet. If you do have questions, please feel free to chat it and I will make sure we get it answered. Okay, yes, yes. And if you wanna see PowerSchool, if you wanna see Parent Square, We'll show you that too at the end, okay? Just so you can have a visual. Okay, back to school shopping list. There are lots of things here, um, but we're gonna be getting you most of your, um, your supplies. So in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be calling you all in to pick up your bag of supplies. Uh, the laptop case, we're working on getting that laptop case. Uh, Mr. Russell, how far out are we with the laptop cases? Um, it's looking like September or October. We're, we've had some trouble sourcing them with um, COVID and everything, but I think we've finally got it, the process going. So um, we will be supplying a, uh, like a hardened laptop case for every laptop. So it'll help, help it kind of fare some drops and, and uh, things hitting it. All right, thank you. Now, when you're back on campus, you will need your backpacks. You will need water bottles. We're not using our water stations at this time due to COVID. So it's gonna be really important that you come in with your water bottle and then of course your backpacks. Um, if you're in need of a backpack, contact Mr. Smith. Uh, we do have backpacks on campus as well that we are happy to give away. All right, uh, professional attire. Again, those are things you wanna order through the uh, student store and then over here, We'll have notebooks for you, pens, pencils. Uh, if you want to get some highlighters, you can do that. But most of our reading is done online. And so we annotate, we take, we highlight online as well. Okay, so that's that. And again, in a couple of weeks, we'll be calling you in to come and pick up your bag of uh, resources. Now, the E3 uh, Civic High website, I'll open it up. And then Ms. Strenning, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so the, the website's a great, it just got revamped. It looks amazing, um, it, but it's a great um, resource. If you have any questions, I would always go to the, the, the website first just to see if you can find the answer. If not, obviously, email us or call us. Um, but 
If you scroll down a little bit, you can see our school calendar. So you'll see important dates right there. So as, as things update, I know we're living in kind of a fluid environment. So there are gonna be some tentative dates here. So you'll be able to see all those upcoming dates right there. And then up on the top, we have great information about reopening, admissions, academics, um, if you need to contact a learning facilitator, everybody's emails are in the academics area or about us, I forget, yeah, the staff directory. Um, and then this is also, you can go to the school store to purchase some professional attire. So if you do need some professional attire, you can purchase that at our school store and Dr. Ward is clicking on it right there. You can purchase everything online and then once it's ready, it'll be ready and you can kind of you can come back up and pick up your bag of your attire that you've ordered. Anything else in that? Um, I don't think so. You go during at the alumni part, you can see what some of our alumni are doing and you can also request your transcripts. I know some people, some of you email your counselor or Ms. Carter to get a transcript. You can also simply complete this form to get an official transcript sent to wherever you need it if you're applying to a scholarship or an internship or even a college in a couple of years. So that's a great resource for you to have right on our website. Thank you, Ms. Right. 10th grade academics overview. Yeah, so this is our part, the counselor's part, and we love talking to our scholars. Here's just a reminder of our graduation requirements. We will go into this a lot more in depth during our parent institutes coming up, um, but we definitely meet or exceed the A through G requirements. And remember those A through G requirements are a set of requirements set forth by the University of California, California State University of specific requirements that they need in order for scholars to even apply to their colleges. So we wanna make sure that we align and exceed their requirements. So that way, the scene in, during your senior year, you are ready to apply to that college. Um, so there's one different requirement that is actually going to happen for the A through G requirements that we've already got a step forward on, and that's our computer science requirement. As 10th graders, this year, you will be taking a, a computer science course and that is required for graduation. And those choices are either exploring computer science or you can choose to take the Intro to Python and Intro to Java programming class. And those classes lead to AP computer science and cybersecurity and a lot other um, pathways if you are interested in that. Um, so you did make your choices in the spring for your course, and I'll get into how you can change that if you felt like changing it. Um, and then just some other information about these, all these A through G requirements and these graduation requirements, they are all required to be passed with a C or higher. So for if during your ninth grade year, you had a D or an F in any of these graduation requirements, we will need you to re, um, recover that and take that course over again. And we will give you the opportunity either to take the course online, to take the course in a credit recovery class or a summer school class. So there's going to be opportunity for you to make those up, um, but we definitely need that to happen in order for you to graduate and be eligible to apply to the CSU and UC systems. And then some other graduation requirements that usually happen around 11th or 12th grade. Um, we do require that all of our scholars take the SAT or ACT exam, and we offer that for free on campus during the spring of your 11th grade year. Um, so we definitely take care of that, and you can always register for more of those exams. We wanna make sure that everybody gets to take that exam, so that way they're eligible to apply to whatever colleges they might wanna to apply to for. And then senior year, you have a lot of stuff to do, and that starts with your senior presentation of learning. So those are the POLs. Um, you ninth grader, or 10th graders now, but you had chance to watch some during your ninth grade year. And that's one of our favorite days because the seniors get to really reflect on all four years of high school and what they're going to do in the future. So as a 10th grader, start thinking about what you wanna bring to the table during your POL, during your 12th grade year. And then we also require all of our 12th graders to take the senior workforce development course, and that is your internship. And you will also take your senior design thinking course. And you all had a taste of that last year, and that will be really your capstone project. 
Um, and then you get to be in a college prep class that's with me and Ms. Cologne, and we will make sure that you are submitting at least one four-year college application, if not more than that. You're gonna be submitting your financial aid application, either that's the FAFSA or the DREAM Act, and you're gonna be submitting at least one scholarship, but we definitely recommend submitting at least five to 10 to make sure that you get that free money that you deserve for college. And like I said, we'll be going over this a lot more during our parent institutes. And then this is kind of our sample schedule for 10th grade. Many of you know what courses you already have. Um, the big decision you get to make as a 10th grader is do I wanna be in world history, which is a great class, or do I wanna challenge myself and take AP world history? And I'm looking at a lot of scholars that decided they wanted to take that AP world history and that we applaud you and we can't wait to see how you do in that course. Um, you'd also have your 10th grade English, your pre-AP English 3-4. You'll have your math, so whatever level you have next. You'll have your PE and then that, that computer science course, either the Exploring Computer Science or the Intro to Python and Intro to Java course. 10th grade um, science is chemistry unless you opted to take an AP course. Then you'll usually have a foreign language and then you'll have space for your e-block. So this is kind of a sample schedule. Your schedule should be up on PowerSchool. You should have received that also with your report card in June. But if you didn't, please email your counselor and we can make sure you get that. So schedule changes. I know some people are thinking, oh, I might want to take that AP World History or I might want to switch my computer science course. This is how you'll request your schedule change. You will have the first uh, reporting period to request a schedule change from your counselor. In order to do this, you must fill out the schedule change request form. It's just a simple Google form to let us know what you want to change, why, what class you want to get into. Um, and then we will do our best to accommodate. We can't promise every accommodation is going to be successful um, because we are going to look at your graduation requirements. We need you to take all your classes needed for graduation. Um, so the last day to request your schedule changes will be October 2nd. This is the last day to um, request a schedule change. After this date, if you request a schedule change, you will receive a W on your transcript, which just means withdrawal. Um, and like I said, once we get your request, we'll evaluate if changes are possible and we will contact you via email or Google chat. So it's very important to keep that Google chat open and answer your emails. Because if we have a, a question for you, um, we want to make sure that we can ask you that question. And if you have any questions, please contact your counselor. And lastly, you all should know this by now, you're 10th graders, but some keys to school success. The biggest one I can say is organization. Use a planner to manage your time. You have a lot of classes. You have a lot of clubs. Some of you might be working. You have a lot of things to do. So make sure you use a planner and write a list of to-dos every day. I start my morning and Ms. Cologne starts our morning with a list of things that we need to get done. And as we're going, we scratch it off. And I know I probably talked to a lot of you about that. So make sure you're writing everything down. And then also study skills. I'm sure you're learning as you go. You always learn as you go on how you study the best. Um, the biggest thing I can say is if you need help, ask. Attend tutoring, attend Saturday Academy. We are all here to support you, so make sure you're taking advantage of all those resources. Also, set time aside after school for homework or studying. Three to four hours a night is recommended for you to just read, to study, to understand the material, and then utilize those tutoring and resources, off, resources that we offer at this school. We already touched on attendance. It's really easy, show up on time and ready to learn. And then the biggest thing is if you do all this, if you put that time in, use your resources, those grades will follow. As we learn, grades matter for your future. We wanna keep all those doors open for your future. So just ask if you need help, we are all here to help support you. Thank you. And Mr. Smith, anything else on organizing yourself? Can't hear you. Hello? Hello? Yes. That's all right. Um, definitely important to be able to recognize the importance of organizing. Um, with our brains, we're only able to um, comprehend so much. And from um, exactly what Ms. Strenning is saying, it allows us to free up extra space to be able to kind of function through the day. So it's just um, giving support to yourself. We understand that there's a lot of stress and anxiety that goes along with just, you know, this space now going into the 10th, 10th grade. but it is definitely proven through um, research. Your brain can manage a bit more once it has that additional help. 
So having those passion planners, having those um, organizers, that's going to help you far greater um, on this process. Thank you. Okay, 10th grade learning facilitators, let's find out who they are. Hello, E3 families. I'm so excited and thankful to be back with you this year. My name is Steven Sweetie, and I'm the learning facilitator for computer science. All of the 10th graders end up taking a computer science class, but we're not preparing you just to do a STEM career in college. Digital literacy is a key skill for the future, no matter whether you're going into a job or going on to higher education. The computer science program at E3 gives you pathways to get jobs to pay for college, and it also can provide a good, solid, well-paying career in the San Diego area. In addition to my computer science responsibilities, I'm also leading the ninth and 10th grade teams for design thinking. We're very excited to follow up on the success we had last year, winning several prizes locally and nationally. Um, so we'll learn more about design thinking as we go into the year. The next person I'd like to introduce is Mr. Goodwin. Hello, welcome. My name is David Goodwin. I am the learning facilitator for drama at E3. I teach uh, drama, theater, uh, advanced drama, we added uh, a screenwriting class this year. Um, I also teach uh, play production, which is where we actually put on shows. Um, and then I will also be teaching one section of grade AP, pre AP English this year. So I'm uh, really, really glad to be back. And we are still uh, going full steam with production in the virtual uh, world. So uh, really, really excited about uh, lots of new things that we're doing this year. Um, and our next person up is Mr. Marquez. Mr. Marquez, and I will be teaching Integrated Math 2, which is 10th grade math. And we will be working on an online curriculum called Ingenuity. And also I will be doing my best to incorporate uh, projects despite the uh, online learning. Um, so I'm uh, ready for you guys, for my scholars to come and start learning some math. Hello, E3 families. My name is Nevin Sarau, and I am new to the E3 family this year. Um, I am a learning facilitator in the science department teaching chemistry. So I will be handling chemistry as well as AP chemistry. And a uh, big thing for me is promoting a scientific skill set with my scholars. And I'm fairly confident in how we're going to do that. We will be investigating things from an exploratory standpoint, real world phenomenon, and seeing ourselves as scientists. And I'm looking forward to being part of this group. I'd like to introduce our next person, Mr. Lee. Hi, family. My name is Lee Lee. I am a learning assistant at E3, and I will be supporting our spread population uh, throughout all grade levels this year, and I look forward to working with you. All right, and that is our 10th grade team. Hello, E3 families. I'm so excited and thankful to be back with you this year. My name is Steven Sarudi, and I'm the learning facilitator for computer. Okay, let's see, let's get this. All right, uh, let's see, I'm stuck on that page. Okay, think tank on school reopening. So we will have an opportunity and we invite all of our parents to join us on September the 3rd at 2 p.m. when we will uh, roll out the plans for reopening the school and we would also like your feedback on ways for a safe reopening. Okay, and the reopening is when we invite our scholars back on hopefully September 21st. Again, we will only be bringing back 120 scholars um, at that time. Okay, so please fill out the survey. And if you would like to register to um, this registration link, is just to join us on 9 3 September 3rd. Yes, and I just copied the link into the chat so you can get the link right there. Okay. All right, and so with that, we wanna thank you all for joining us today. If you have any questions, uh, you can stick around and have those answered. Otherwise, we'll see all of our beautiful scholars online on Monday, August 31st. I wish I was down on the ground, giving you all a bump fist as you come in, but um, soon enough, we'll be back to that. All right, so until Monday, take good care. Enjoy the rest of your vacation, the few days that you have left.